All right, I hear you. You're looking for a simple yet secure small base. Something that you could build quickly on wipe day on just about any server. With this build, I'm not gonna make you build out 15 triangles before turning around and building back to place a wall. Instead, we're gonna be focusing on improving an already easy design that you might be familiar with. This build is actually just an incredibly modular 2x2 bunker design. In fact, this base can be started with as little as a 1x1. Expanding as you get more resources, you could leave it at a 2x2 honeycombing it all up, or you can add a second floor with easy access over top of the bunker, and outward expansion is only limited by the resources that you have and your imagination. With tons of security and storage, if you're ready to step up your game without having to be a master builder, this is the base for you. Before we jump into the build, a quick word about my personal favorite solo only server. Hello folks, it's Business Rex here to talk to you about Lone Wolf. One of my favorite servers, Lone Wolf is the best option for that solo only vanilla experience. With a pop that just won't quit, there's always something to do and someone to fight. Lone Wolf is enforced by the most active admin team I've seen in my 8 years of Rust, giving me a place I can play and finally not worry about cheaters and teamers all the time. Lone Wolf operates on a monthly wipe schedule with no BP wipes ever, meaning you'll always have a place to come back to even after a force wipe. Currently ranking as the top solo only server in North America, you have no reason not to check it out. And starting June 2nd, you'll be able to find Lone Wolf EU. To learn more, head over to wolfrust.gg and don't forget to join the Discord for news, events, prizes, and more at discord.gg slash lonewolf. In order to build this base, you're going to want to find a nice, relatively flat piece of land. Although, if it's not perfect, just make sure you raise your foundations to an appropriate height. Now, with all of my builds, I recommend making sure you can place the entire footprint first, as well as any upgrades you might need later. To do this for this build, we simply place a 2x2, two two, and then with one triangle on each side, we can actually check and make sure all honeycomb pieces will work. And then we can start living out of this square here. Actually, we'll, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll go with this square. I am going to not upgrade that for now, instead putting one here. We're going to place half walls on three sides, and then a full wall on this side. This full wall is very important for this build later, so we gotta, so we got to make sure we do that. Then we're going to switch over to a full wall, a full wall, throw a half wall on top of there, and a door frame here. This is going to act as our initial one by one with a triangle at the back here. You can put this as wood for now or go ahead and upgrade it to stone. Make sure you throw a door on and lock that as soon as possible. Sealing off the roof for now, we're going to place our TC in this back corner here. Lining it up in the tile grout here, we're then going to push back as far as possible and then take it all the way to the right. Once you get yourself tucked into that corner nicely, you'll have room for a box later as well as up to a tier two workbench. Of course, because this base is kind of a wide open design, we're going to want to make sure we lock our TC, as well as any boxes that we do place down in here. Once you're ready to upgrade, we're going to come out here and we're going to destroy these for now as we don't need them and they're going to kind of signal what's going on in the base. Next, we're just going to place half walls around this entire foundation down here, including this honeycomb front area. And we can go ahead and upgrade all of this to stone for now, or of course you can do it in sections if that's what you'd prefer to do and you don't have the resources. This half wall goes here, and then we're actually going to place this over for now, and surround everything with the walls. Here we're going to have our door face outwards here, another half wall, and temporarily I do recommend placing a door here. However, because this door is going to be temporary, we are going to only make it out of wood. This is going to make it very easy to destroy later with just one salvage sword being more than enough to take that out. The reason we're going to do that, and the same reason we're going to do it right here, upgrading this one only to wood, is that's going to give you great expansions options later. I am also going to temporarily just throw down some twig here, which is going to make movement through the base just a little easier. And once we get furnaces, we'll place our furnaces into the airlock area. Slapping on a couple doors, you then go ahead and airlock yourself in. And keeping in mind that we're going to destroy this wall here, as well as this roof piece later on in the build when we're ready to upgrade. I do recommend waiting until you have garage doors, as that's going to make the rest of this build much easier when you do have them. And it's kind of a good point to start expanding. Now, of course, we have deployables to place. Early on, when you're still living out of the 1x1, I recommend just slapping down your two furnaces, or one furnace, right here, as that's going to be the easiest way to get that going early game. I'd also recommend placing your workbench at this back wall. 
And you can fit up to a tier 2 workbench here. You can, of course, remove that when you're upgraded to a tier 3 later and switch it out for a box. If you do, however, have your entire 2x2 finished, you're not going to need these down here, so instead we're going to place boxes. To do that, we're going to line it up against the wall here using that back wall goes through pattern to make sure we have it straight. Pull forward until we get a blue. And then just a little bit more further. A pixel or two. And then to the left. Ram it in in the back there. And you should be able to place another box right here. If you've done all of that correctly, the third one will go in nicely right here. However, I don't like the four box cons configuration that you could easily do right here if you've placed it all correctly as it does sometimes require a little bit of fighting and it's not actually the most efficient placement so instead we're gonna place this small box back here and we're gonna have to remove this box to do so place the small box and then go ahead and place your large box back again you will need to be standing to do so it doesn't like when you're crouched and then instead of doing another large box we're now gonna be forced to place small boxes down here so with a little bit of jumping, actually it might just require us to come down here. We're going to place that far back there and place the small box here. Gives us a little bit more storage and makes looting down here a little easier. Of course, you can also place a small box underneath this, but do keep in mind we are getting rid of this workbench later. All right, and then for our storage down here, we're going to want to put it tight into this back corner, but we're actually going to pull it a little bit further away from the wall just to give us a bit more room. About the width of a box, you could actually go ahead and place the small box first just to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. Place that. Now, you can actually do this and put it all the way to the back, but it's going to make looting later much harder, so I just recommend avoiding it and following this method. Using the line on the ground there, I'm able to see where my placement should be. And pull forward. We can then slap one more box in the middle here. And we're going to handle this side now. Coming over to this back wall. And we're going to place one over here. And one right here. Fill in the rest of the small boxes. And you could get one more here, but it does get a little complicated for looting, so I don't recommend it. And then from here, you should be able to access all of your boxes as well as your barbecue without any issues. Once you've got yourself a bit more established and you're ready to upgrade, we're going to go ahead and knock this out. To do that, you're just going to need one or two salvage swords or a couple other tools, and it actually goes out pretty quickly. A lot of people don't realize how simple it is to eco-raid soft side of walls and floors, and it just doesn't really take any time at all. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and destroy this too, as we're not going to want that to be that current raid anymore. Now we can go ahead and place our roof piece, upgrade that to our current grade, and we're going to place a floor triangle frame. We're not going to want to upgrade this frame. Do not upgrade this frame. Never upgrade this frame. All right, once that's done, we can go ahead and drop some boxes down here in our regular configuration. At this point, we're gonna need to open up our bunkers so we can get outside again. To do that, we're gonna place a roof piece here and upgrade it. However, to avoid somebody being able to go full deep, I recommend having a shotgun trap available and we will go over that in a second. If at any point you need to seal your bunker, you will need to destroy this frame here. Once that's destroyed, it will again seal the bunker. One important tip when upgrading your bunker is to not place anything here. This socket cannot get occupied. If it gets occupied, it will automatically seal your bunker. So when you're expanding, whether or not you intend to just pancake the layer here and seal it up, or you intend to add a second floor, Make sure you don't fill this socket, instead of only filling these sockets here to upgrade and seal it in. However, if like me, you would like to have a second floor, we're not going to add a pancake layer yet. Destroying all of these pieces, we're going to add walls around this just to give us a bit more storage and expansion options to go up.
Again, I can't emphasize this enough. Make sure any door frames you place or anything are in this socket and not this socket. And there we go. I have roof access. Of course, there could be many other ways you can figure this, but this is going to give you the easy option to run around, jump around, and get through your base. Of course, this is intended to be a furnace room, and uh, this was a slight oversight on my, my department here. You need to place your furnaces beforehand. Actually, it might still place. Oh, wonderful. It still places. Place your furnaces like this. And just be wary of door campers, but once you've upgraded and expanded a little bit, it becomes considerably safer to use that area. And I am actually going to have two more furnace areas. That's because I always like to be cooking, and I don't like to use large furnaces as they attract a lot of attention. Sealing in this doorway, adding myself another little drop box, and filling them in with furnaces. Of course, if I don't have enough furnaces at any point, I will just use a, tri or a twig piece, as it gives more man maneuverability without any issues. For honeycombing outside, simply follow the same route we did before, and go to town. Of course, you're not limited to just honeycombing, and you could have hallways or anything else you'd prefer to have outside. The whole point of this base is that the expansion options are very much endless, and this can be used either as a core, or a main base. How you decide to expand or honeycomb this base really is gonna depend on what you need out of the base. If you decide you need to go up and have roof access to defend against campers, great. However, if you're looking for a small, compact, and secure design, this right here will do it, featuring half walls to pancake layer that top, and of course your standard honeycomb all around. Heading inside, we have room for up to nine small furnaces, more than enough for any solo or duo to get things going. And of course, we've blocked off the roof access, and we don't have any room here currently to mine out a wall. However, with this wall here, I do recommend when you upgrade it to metal, turn it around so that it's facing this way. This is going to prevent soft siding through here, and it's going to help prevent somebody from getting deep easier into your base. I do recommend upgrading everything in here to at least metal, including your roof pieces. And in doing so, you're actually going to create a very reasonable cost. This upkeep here is more than reasonable in my mind for a solo player, even to the point where upgrading all of this core to high qual really wouldn't be that big of a stretch. Of course, let's get the roof piece upgraded as well, just to show the final costs. And there we have it. Just a few nodes a day and you get to keep your base fairly secure. The last point I would look at is destroying this twig here and resealing the bunker. We're going to place a shotgun trap with a slight upward elevation at about here. You're going to want to make sure you can still place the twig triangle, or square. I don't know why I keep calling it this triangle. And load this up. What's going to happen with that piece there is anytime somebody jumps into your base and gets past this piece here, it's going to trigger that shotgun trap. That shotgun trap is also going to shoot the twig and seal the bunker for you. While this is going to get them inside, it's going to get them trapped inside. And of course, if you happen to have your garage door closed down, any rockets that attempt to damage the garage door is going to also... Oops. Is going to also seal your bunker. This means you can leave your bunker open for the entire playthrough, only really having to seal it if you're worried about a raid. I do recommend the roof triangle rather than the roof as it makes things a little easier to get through later. When you have your tier 3 workbench, you're going to have to remove this bag right here and your tier 3 is going to go right here. This is going to make movement a little limited and getting through here will require that you have the triangle instead of the full floor. Of course, if you enjoyed the build, if you learned anything, and if you want to see more content like it in the future, Make sure to smash that like button as it does help me out quite a bit. As well, subscribe for that future content so that I can help you out at the same time. This design was actually created in large thanks to Dark, who having seen my chat cube, decided I gotta maximize that 2x2. Two two. And with a little bit of working together, we figured out how to get the most storage out of that space. And with that being said, if you have any designs you would like me to see or maybe even feature in a video, join my Discord and make sure to let me know.